saving your popcorn for the film to start has just got a whole lot harder thanks to our good friends at Joe and Seth's. They're an award-winning gourmet popcorn company and oh boy, let us tell you more. Handmade in London, this all-natural air-popped popcorn comes in 50 different flavours. Double salted caramel, banoffee pie, honey and hazelnut? Oh my god, some drool just fell in my microphone. <laughs> if you head to joeandsefs.co.uk right now, fill up your basket with snacks and type in the promo code HEYNOW at checkout, you can get a lovely 10% off your order. No movie or podcast listening is complete without Joe and Seth's. Amen. Oh, I'm going to caramel heaven. Hey now. Hey now. And welcome to the show where two childhood friends discuss their favourite childhood movies. I'm Emily Sandford. And I'm Barney Lee. And whether it's iconic lines, musical moments, or just questionable outfit choices... The films you'll be hearing about in our show are unique in their own way, and this week we'll be kicking off with the Lizzie McGuire movie. Uh, I'm so excited! Lizzie, is that you? I'm in the room. (laughs) Warning, this episode contains nostalgia and big love for cool cheese. Did you just say cool cheese? Yeah, parmesan is life. You know when you're in the restaurant and they're like, tell me when to stop. I'm like, one hour later. (laughs) So we're here. We, we made it. We are doing our first episode. We have been wanting to do this five ever. And I'm so excited that we are on this journey. Prosecco is in hand. Yes. Oh. Music to my ears. Mm. Someone's going to have a hangover tomorrow. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. <laughs> this is amazing. We've grown up on these iconic films. So it feels only natural that we would get in front of a mic and talk about them. And I can't think of a better film to start with than the Lizzie McGuire movie. It's so iconic. The fact that it doesn't have an Academy Award. Honestly, it's disgusting. It's a disgrace. (laughs) A disgrace to the Academy. Yeah, I am going to write letters. I'm going to throw paint bombs. Is that a thing? (laughs) I don't know. Paintballs? Is that what? (laughs) Paintballs. We can tell you've never been rebellious before. (laughs) I'm just going to throw these paint bombs. (laughs) At who? How are you going to get in? The academy. <laughs> the building? Or the, yeah. Or the judges? I'm really hot. <laughs> okay. I promise, guys, we're going we're gonna to behave. It's just uh, the excitement of this show. Exactly. We're really excited that you're going to be part of this journey and this club. Thank you for Can joining our, our fan club. You know, for every subscriber and five-star review we get, you will personally receive nothing because we don't have the budget but we will love you eternally and you know what if you need us to do a double tap on any of your instagram posts let us know we'll be the first people one honey one honey (laughs) honey so lucy mcguire sorry before we get into this i need to speak my truth what the hell is going on with this reboot what the hell man disney please please we need it (laughs) Beginning from the the rumours, to the announcement that Lizzie McGuire was coming back, to the photos on set that were being taken, to Gordo coming back, and then suddenly taken away from us like that. They just don't understand. Obviously, the film was released in 2003. Mm -hmm. We have waited 17 years, therefore. (laughs) That's as old as Paolo. Just saying, a whole Paolo could have been born in that time. That's so mad. And so, really, we're so ready for this reunion. And they're just tugging at our heartstrings. Yeah. They're just giving us a bit, taking it away. So what was it? So the showrunner and creator who was working on the reboot, who also created the original series, she was, she left the project or she was pushed away from the project? I think Terry Minsky, who wrote Lizzie McGuire, basically decided that she wants to do what Hilary Duff wants to do. And that's grow with the audience and, you know, write from a 30 year old's mind. Yeah. Whereas Disney are like, we're PG. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is Disney who own Marvel, who are so comfortable showing like superheroes pulling off people's heads and like blood and everything. Come on. Exactly. You can't like pick a lane, not the lane. <laughs> who plays Get in your little lane. <laughs> God. 
<laughs> Lelaine, who plays Miranda Sanchez in Lizzie McGuire, we love you. We miss you. Please come to the reboot. You're the only one who will save us from this <laughs> torture. So I was just looking at Hilary Duff's Instagram and she did a post saying how excited she was to launch Lizzie on Disney Plus and her passion remains. But obviously she feels it's her huge responsibility to honour the fans' relationship with Lizzie who grew up seeing themselves in her. So obviously now we're all kind of that age. We do want to grow up with her. True. Like we are that age. We want to see Lizzie as a 30 year old. We don't want to see her getting into like PG antics. Exactly. We're not asking for anything raunchy. We just want like... I don't need her in a sex swing. (laughs) I just need to see her like Chardonnay in hand, you know? No, we just want her sitting on the balcony gnawing a baguette with a glass of red wine, you know? So, where are they now? Hilary Duff. Hills. Hills. She's married to Matthew Comer. She's got two adorable kids, Luca and Banks. So cute. So, after Lizzie McGuire movie, she had a few bangers. Oh my God, tell me about it. Come Clean and that remix that I forgot the name of, that was iconic. (laughs) And then when she came back in like, what was it, like 2015? She had that song Sparks. Oh, Number one, you know, I'm ready for Hillary's return to music at any time. I know, we're waiting. <laughs> we're, wait- we're waiting on a lot of things from Hillary, and it's not her sunglasses range. Sorry, Hills, but like, we don't care. <laughs> we don't. We really don't. <laughs> anyway, change the subject. She's also starred recently in obviously that TV series, Younger. Yes. I don't think we get it in the UK. No, I've never watched it before, which is a shame. So Adam Lamberg, he played Gordo. Mm -hmm. Gordo's Beck, baby. No, he ain't. (laughs) How sad. This is like his time to shine again, 17 years later. And now he's not going to be doing the reunion. Imagine getting the call, like, we want you back for the reboot. Films one episode and it's like, ha ha, bye. (laughs) I'd be so upset. I'd be so upset too. Um, After Lizzie McGuire, he basically shied away from the limelight. He did do a few indie films, one called Beautiful Loser. He graduated from UC Berkeley. And he keeps himself busy behind the scenes right now as the development officer at the Irish Arts Centre in New York. Clayton Snyder. Ugh, the love of my life. Dreamboat that played Ethan Craft. You'll be sad to hear that he's not a professional skateboarder. What? I know. That's what we all thought would happen to him. He is, however, this is very lovely news. He's engaged to Allegra Edwards. Oh, congratulations. (laughs) Don't be jealous. (laughs) I know the whole world is jealous, but (laughs) don't show on our podcast. Uh. Ethan, well, Clayton, went to Pepperdine University after Lizzie McGuire movie. Nice. And he played water polo. He really got into that from 2006 to 2009. Wow. This is what the internet is sharing with us. Another little fact, obviously, that relates to the film. He's half Italian. (gasps) No way. So he has got that Italian blood. Now, this is something you is just going to, like, blow your mind. Ashley Brillo, who plays Kate Sanders... Ugh, Ugh. what's your email address? Lizzie at (laughs) biggiantloser.com. So Ashley, she's a defense attorney. What? Yeah, in California. Like a a lawyer? She's a lawyer. Can you imagine that? You're like settling your divorce and Kate Sanders walks in as your lawyer. (laughs) What? (laughs) I would marry someone and divorce them just so I could meet Kate Sanders. (laughs) Is that bad? I don't think so. <laughs> Neither. No shame in that at all. She's also mother to a really adorable little girl. So Aww. life got good for Ashley. So this guy, love to hate him. Really? Yanni Gelman. He plays Paolo. He's been in TV and film ever since the film came out. He's been so successful. He's been in Pretty Little Liars. He was also Diego Flores in 90210. Oh, I love that show. Yeah. Bring that back. And also, he seems really, like, humanitarian on Instagram as well. He doesn't have that many followers, and I would expect him to, but hey. Well, probably people haven't forgiven him for making Lizzie look like a fool on the stage. That's true. I mean, it's been 17 years, but people don't forget. No. So, Alex Borstein, she plays Miss Ungermeyer. Attention, parents, shut your pie holes. Wow, that was good. She plays Lois in Family Guy. That's huge. She's, like, the biggest star 
in this film, really. Totally. She was also in Marvelous Miss Maisel and also appeared in Gilmore Girls, which I love. Yes. So now we know where the cast are. Yes. Shall we go into Best Supporting Character? Let's do it, our first category! Okay, so best supporting character. There are so many amazing characters in this film. Seriously. But we needed to whistle it down to one. And boy, did we find one. The incomparable Margaret Chan. You're no Margaret Chan. You're no Margaret Chan. That is the best diss ever. Yeah. Honey, who do you think you are? You're no Margaret Chan. <laughs> <laughs> now for anyone who's a bit confused and who's like don't remember Margaret Chan. Well, first of all, how dare you? She was the class president and valedictorian of their high school graduation. And she couldn't attend last minute because Mr. Escobar said she either had Ebola or a cold. Two very different things. (laughs) You can't just be making up rumors that someone's got Ebola. Jeez. That is scaremongering right there. (laughs) Mr. Escobar, that is very inappropriate. So Margaret Chan, how did she get that role? She just submitted her Literally, headshot? Literally, it's a headshot. I think it might just be a stock image. Maybe that woman didn't even know that she was going to be in this film. How amazing. Imagine right? you go to the cinema, you're like, oh, Liz McGuire movie, yeah, I'll watch that. And then in the very first scene, you see your face on all these posters. <laughs> I would drop dead. That's the problem if you pay to be a stock image. Like, you get paid, what, like £250 and you don't know if you're going to be a movie star like iconic yeah or on an sdd poster oh you just don't know but anyway she lucked out she did luck out yeah. you're no margaret chan i literally want that on a t-shirt i also want to make it my twitter bio just every time your ego starts talking to you just remind yourself you know margaret chan <laughs> Emily and I have teamed up with Joe and Seth's Popcorn, the amazing London-based gourmet popcorn brand that sells 50 different flavours in stores and on their website. Miss Ungermeyer would definitely tuck into this tiramisu flavour. And this savoury cheddar? Mmm, Gordo would be straight on that. Gotta love cool cheese. If you go to joeandseths.co.uk right now, you can get 10% off your order by putting in the promo code HEYNOW at checkout. Now that is what dreams are made of. So next we're going to move on to best musical moment. And there are some bangers in this film. Oh my gosh, absolutely. The soundtrack is perfect. We start off with Atomic Kittens, The Tide is High. I always hated when we were younger, when parents would be like, oh, Blondie sang this? Oh, shush, it's an Atomic Kitten original. Come on. Just let them have it. We try, like, do you think Hilary Duff was aware of Atomic Kitten? I'm not sure. Did Atomic Kitten make it to the US? Well, they must have if they were in the Lizzie McGuire movie. And Lizzie seems to know the words, although she might have learned the Blondie version. I don't know. Who knows? But pretty good. So iconic. We also have a bit of Hilary Duff's own music appear in this film. Mm -hmm. Why not take a crazy chance? Do a crazy dance or something. That's it. The lyrics are that embarrassing. I'm going to do that next time we go to karaoke. Great. Uh, I will not be there. <laughs> Just me on my own. Why <laughs> not staring into the eyes of the guy at the bar? Do a crazy dance. One more tequila shot. <laughs> it would be a crime against humanity if we didn't choose. This is what dreams are made of. Us, the best musical moment. I haven't heard of that song. What is it? <laughs> it's only the bloody name of our podcast. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. It's the best film finale song I think I've ever, ever heard. The choreo, the costumes, everything about the split screen, the fact that, I don't know if you know about this, Hilary Duff and Hayley Duff sang this song. Yes! Because they wanted Isabella's voice to have a slightly different tone, which I think is so smart. So smart. So Hayley, Hilary's sister. Mm -hmm. Less successful sister, (gasps) yes. She... True, but she sung Isabella's parts. That's such a good trivia fact. Love that. In fact, if I went on Mastermind, Lizzie McGuire movie yes. might have to be my topic. Oh my gosh. I'd be up against like Mozart's Birth Town or <laughs> something. You know, like the nerds go on there and pick like a really <laughs> obscure, intelligent topic. Oh, you don't know Mozart's Birth Town? <laughs> 
<laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Anyway, shall we go on to best quotes? Oh, I don't think I'm ready, but let's do it. Okay, so this category, whew, best quotes. I mean, the entire script could go into best quotes. We have selected a few that we think are the most iconic, and hopefully you agree with us. The first quote that I want to go for is, I'd eat carbs if an Italian boy but." <laughs> Point them, point them for me. Hey, mister. Um, I'd eat carbs if an Italian boy bort, bort, bort from the Simpsons. We got a board license plate. I'd eat carbs if an Italian boy bought them for, what? Bought, bought, bought them. Bought. I'd eat carbs if an Italian boy bought them for me. I want that on my gravestone. Yeah, it is. Surprise. <laughs> I'd eat carbs if anyone bought them for me. Seriously. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can never go to Marbs. Just. <laughs> <laughs> because carbs come first. Exactly. Right, got you. For a second, I lost you, but I'm, I'm right back with you. <laughs> we literally cannot leave out this quote. Sing to me, Paolo. I saw a clip of somebody in line at a Hilary Duff CD signing. And when they got to the front and met her, they said... Can you say sing to me Paolo to to me? And Hillary was like, sing to me Paolo. Like she completely went for it. It was incredible. Amazing. Sing to me Paolo is one of those film moments that just stay with you forever. Oh, a hundred percent. So dramatic, so iconic, sass levels a thousand. Just incredible. If your friends don't say that to you before you go up on the mic at karaoke, you need new friends. <laughs> And on the subject of Isabella, you can't leave out her other iconic line. Who are you going to believe? This boy you had known your whole life? Or this guy who says you shine like the light from the sun? It's something like that. Your impression of an Italian person is as bad as Hilary Duff's impression of an Italian person. Grazie. <laughs> Okay, so there's also that moment where um, Gordo goes back to the hotel and he knocks on Lizzie's bedroom door and she's obviously sharing with Kate. Mm. And he's like, can I speak to uh, Lizzie alone? And Kate obviously tells him that she knows what the deal is. If it's about this whole Lizzie pretending to be a pop star thing, <laughs> I know about it. And he's like, wow, evil and smart. And then she goes, embrace it, fear it. <laughs> I hope that's what she says whenever she does her lawyer stuff. Yeah. Embrace it. Fear it. The other quote, which we cannot forget. You know, Matt Maguire, he's still quite a big character in this film. And also Melina, who's played by Carly Schroeder. She says to him when he's given all the footage to like Good Morning America of Lizzie ruining graduation. Yeah. Melina's like, try buying a PS2 with a pride of a job well done. Oh, oh. if that doesn't age the film... Then I don't know what does. PS2. PS2. My grandma had a PS2. And she was really cool at the time. I wish my grandma had a PS2. Oh, no. Mine didn't even have Sega. R.I.P. Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I love Sega. Same. Same All that my grandma has now is Alzheimer's. Oh. <laughs> Too dark. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> So next up, Emily, we are going to discuss most iconic outfit. And oh boy, there are many to choose from. We could start with the powder blue, puffy sleeved. It's kind of a peasant dress, but it might just be a baggy disaster that you wore to the spring dance. <laughs> <laughs> well done. First time. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with repeating an outfit, especially if it's covered by a graduation gown. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, Kate. Not all of us are defense attorneys who can afford multiple outfits. And Chanel pumps. Yeah. Also, shout out to Paolo and his blue tinted sunglasses. And now they're back in fashion. Isn't that so funny? I love a good montage moment in any film. Mm -hmm. But if Lizzie McGuire is involved, shout out to the kind of like green Marie Antoinette one with the wig. Yes. And then you pull the toggle and then... The dress goes up. The dress up. rides up. Just like that Mulan Barbie used to have. I used to love that. 
that. I wanted to. You'd pull take the toggle, it. and then her long hair would go into a bob. Yeah, like you're not fooling anyone. <laughs> That's a woman. <laughs> but the most iconic outfit has to be the igloo dress that Lizzie wears during the runway. Yes. Oh my god, Pingu is quaking in his boots. <laughs> Did he wear boots? No. Not that we ever saw on TV. <laughs> That iconic igloo dress with the hood, the blue lipstick, and the matching eyeshadow. Ah! Bellissima! Bellissima. That's weird! (laughs) So anyway, I'm thinking, you and me, Halloween 2020, you in the igloo dress, me in Paolo's blue sunglasses, name a more iconic power couple. I'll see you there. (laughs) And not a moment sooner. (laughs) Wait, we've still got a whole podcast series to record. (laughs) Scrap that! (laughs) 31st of October, go on. Yeah. So now we're going to go on to my favourite part of the podcast. Well, I know it's going to be the can we discuss section. So this is the part of the podcast where we reflect on the film that we've been talking about. And I don't want to say poke holes, but there will be a few things that we just need to kind of air out and discuss. Questions that need to be answered, you know? Absolutely. So, number one, what on earth is Lizzie's dad's job that he just apparently has endless amounts of income that he can just drop on three flights to Rome in an instant? Rich dad. Joe chose well. In the TV series, he always paints gnomes. Like, is that a big boom in business? It's huge. He's getting millions. He's like raking it in at the garden centre. Ba-dum. <laughs> so how could the Maguire family just jump on a plane willy-nilly to go see Lizzie? I mean, let's not forget, in the series, Lizzie's mum once couldn't work buying Lizzie a new pair of hip huggers into the family budget. Like, unless they won the lottery, I'm having a hard time believing they could just jump on a plane to go see her just because Matt said he felt lonely. <laughs> that is so crazy, isn't it? That they fly all the way. And actually, Emily, will you allow me to do a bit of deep dive here? Yeah. So I looked into Lufthansa, which apparently is the airline of choice in this film. Like Lizzie gets on a Lufthansa flight to Rome. The Maguires fly Lufthansa. First of all, get a better airline, you know? Secondly, I looked into their schedule. Lufthansa does not fly direct from California to Rome. What? Mm-hmm. If you're going to make a film, you've got to do the research, like the accurate research, because there are people like us out there in the world. Who have no lives, who are going to look into this stuff. Exactly. I mean, there's a few budget moments in this film. Like, the green screen is awful, let's be honest. Oh, uh, when in... she's singing to the crowd. Yeah, and when they're on the balcony as well. Oh, yeah. Like, come on, Walt. Empty your pockets. Get some of those coins in the Trevi Fountain and put it towards the budget. Okay, so this is like... My main question of the film. Why isn't Miranda in the movie? Oh my God. I think about this every waking moment. Miranda is my spirit animal. I love that bit. Why is she not in the film? Oh, her family's in Mexico. Hmm, like the story. Yeah, she's gone to Mexico. I've got a conspiracy theory. Hit me. Gordo killed her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that Gordo is Joe from You. Joe always changes his name, right? <gasps> and when they're on the flight to Rome, mm. obviously Lizzie is sitting with Gordo, I was going to call him Joe, and her head is rested on his shoulder. Yeah. And he looks over to her so like smirky, kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> at her. So maybe Miranda originally was supposed to sit in between them, but he wanted to sit next to Lizzie, so he killed Miranda. Oh, yeah, she's gone to Mexico. That is very interesting. Well, I know Lelaine didn't want to be in the film, which is tragic because she would have had... I mean, actually, if I think about it, where would Miranda have fit into this film? You know, like, Lizzie's got her adventure. Gordo's on his own journey. Miranda would probably just be hanging around with Ethan. She could have had her own love story with Gordo. That could have been really cute, like a subplot. Or she snakes her best friend and goes to Ethan. I see that from Miranda. <laughs> hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, honey. Get that Roman nose. <laughs> also, I just want to touch on the fact that this trip is a shambles from the very start. Okay, first of all, the priorities are all over the place. Students are staying in a five-star hotel in Rome. 
and there's only one adult chaperone. What's up with that? I don't know about you, but all my school trips, it's like, oh, here, stay in this like sewer. And here's like 20 adults to like keep an eye on you. Like, you know, when you try and like sneak out your room or like sneak into someone else's room to like chat at like after hours, which is at, like 8 p.m. Whoa, crazy. And there's always a teacher who's like, no, back to bed. Meanwhile, they're like doing crack in the bar downstairs. None of that in this film. One chaperone. They've got this luxurious hotel with a lift. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> with a lift? Yeah, but it's like glass, a glass lift. So it's fancy. Okay, it was yeah. a very fancy hotel. And I'm thinking that the kids who chose the Italy trip have got parents with Dollar. Sam Maguire money. <laughs> <laughs> what was the alternative like a water park yeah yeah and like a coach trip to a water park versus international flight to la cita what is it la cita eterna yeah i know what i'd pick italy the land where they invented spaghetti <laughs> Why don't we just quickly discuss, you know, Lizzie even hanging out with Paolo is a bit stranger danger. Totally. She jumps onto a moped with Paolo, no questions asked. I don't care how famous or cute he is. And also, what's the scaffolding car he owns later on? <laughs> Turns up, he's like a complete fuckboy that drives a car without proper roofs or doors. Like, what's up with that? Pick me up in a Lamborghini or nothing. <laughs> So now we're moving on to the final section of the podcast, which I am so excited for. It's the trivia round. Ooh. So we are going to find out who is the ultimate Lizzie McGuire movie fan right here, right now. Emily, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, question one. What was Mozart's birth town? <laughs> France? It was Salzburg, Austria. Oh, damn it. I knew it really. <laughs> Okay. Messing with you. I'm just kidding. Okay, question one. What position does Lizzie have in the student council? Oh my gosh. Is she like vice president? She's secretary treasurer. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, sorry. Okay, one nil to you. That's fine. Hmm. When Lizzie pretends to be sick, what does the doctor recommend? He recommends peaches. <gasps> Twi- two peaches a day. So close. No. He recommends apricots. Oh, no! <laughs> sorry. Oh, you know, because they're in season. Ugh. <laughs> what are these for her? Digestion? No, they're in season. <laughs> Such a good line. Damn. Okay, okay. What is Paolo's... Sorry, in my notes it says, what is Paulie's... <laughs> Damn, autocorrect. What is Paolo's surname? Valisari. Correct! Woohoo! You got it. <laughs> How many books were on the reading list that Miss Ungermeyer gave the students? Is it 11? Yes! Yes! It's 11, because remember that part in the film where... um. <laughs> She goes, Mr. Kraft, have you even started on your summer reading list? Sorry, Americans. <laughs> He's like, I finished it. You've read 11 books? I read the list. It's so good. I haven't read 11 books in 11 years. <laughs> like, that is crazy. For one summer? He's, you can't read 11 books in two days. No. You are going to be kidding, Miss Angermeyer. <laughs> <laughs> right, next question for you. What does Lizzie wish for as she tosses her coin into the fountain? <gasps> Smooth sailing through high school. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. So what colour mascara does animated Lizzie put on in the beginning of the film? <gasps> oh, that's a good question. I actually think I know it. Go on. Is it blue? It is! Yes! Because she writes somebody's name in the mascara, right? I think so. Yeah, like on the mirror, doesn't she? Because it's like as the credits roll, she's and all the names are popping up, I feel like she takes the mascara and writes somebody's name in it. So it's blue. It is blue. Who owns blue? Why would you own blue mascara? Why would you? Unless you're Smurfette. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the igloo outfit... Matchy. Matchy, matchy. So Ethan tells Gordo that some guys get the approach... And some guys get the what? Oh my god, I have no idea. Some guys get the approach. 
Some guys get the swerve. No, very, very close. He says that they get the sting. Oh, oh, that was a guess. But there is one point where Gordo tells Lizzie that he has a lot of common sense to make up for the fact that he has a lack of slow curve, oh. which is also what Ethan taught him. So some guys get the approach and some guys get the sting. Nice. Okay. Well, good to know. Thank very you for that learning opportunity. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. Emily. Mm-hmm. Finish the lyric. Have you ever wondered what life is about? You can search the world and never figure it out. Have you ever wondered what life is about? What did search you... the world and never figure, figure it, it out. out. You don't have to sail the ocean. Oh, oh, oh. It's actually no, no, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'll give you a half point for that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So when Lizzie McGuire is like dating Paolo and obviously she's really happy, there's a moment in the film where she goes, goodbye, Lizzie McGuire. Hello. What does she say? Fabulous. Yes. Goodbye, Lizzie McGuire. Hello. Fabulous. Something I quote on the reg. <laughs> Love it. My last question for you. Okay. Which award ceremony do Paolo and Isabella perform at? The International Music Video Awards. Correct! Woo! Got it. I think we were pretty evenly matched in that. So that's podcast episode one, Finito. I'm just sticking with the Italian theme. Oh, I love it. We did it. This podcast is definitely what dreams are made of. You had to say that. Of course. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with us. Oh, I hope you stuck with us. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, whatever. A download is a download. (laughs) A like's a like, you know. (laughs) No, thank you so much for sticking with us through this. I really hope you enjoyed us chatting about the Lizzie McGuire movie. And stay tuned because throughout the series, we're going to be talking about so many more iconic childhood movies. So like, subscribe, rate and review. And share with your friends as well if you think that someone else will love our walk down memory lane. Tell them about our podcast because, come on, the more the merrier. So I've been Barney. And I've been Emily. And we will see you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Remember, if you go to joeandsefs.co.uk right now, you can use our promo code HEYNOW for 10% off the best gourmet popcorn. Mmm, also... Hey, save some for me.